All right, foodie Jules here. A little bit of weekend meal prep. Trying to make some food in advance for my busy working week. I was feeling inspired uh, by a YouTuber I recently watched. Shout out Karina, I believe, from Karina Nanapai, uh, who made her Amma's version of Chinese adobo. I'm guessing that's basically Hong Xiaoru. What I found very interesting about how she cooked her adobo or her Chinese adobo really is kind of the, um, you know, the technique was different from what I'm used to. And I believe she, her, her Chinese adobo is kind of referring to a Hong Xiao Ro, but it's basically cooked like an adobo. The interesting part is, you know, it's not so heavy in the Shaoxing, which you tr traditionally see with, you know, mainland Chinese Hong Xiao Ro. Um, that's a very forward flavor in the braising liquid. She added the sugar in the end, which I thought was particularly interesting, but basically, I'm trying to create a dupe of a recipe with some modifications. I got pork belly, light soy sauce, dark soy sauce. I believe she put Xiaoxing in the blanching liquid when she boiled the pork, which I'll do soon. The rock sugar that she put in the end, which was interesting. Got some ginger, got some garlic, got some cinnamon and star anise, some scallions that I kind of bundled up here. So they're easy to fetch out of the pan. And additions of my own, I feel like adding some dried citrus, you know, some tangerine peel, add a little extra flavor. I like a little heat too, so I'm gonna add some of these red chili flakes. Uh, but yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and get started and start by blanching this pork and I'll show you how it goes. All right, foodie Jules here. The blotter has not quite yet gotten to a boil. I basically added a little bit of Chinese cooking wine or Shaoxing cooking wine to this liquid. What we're trying to do here by blanching the pork, and you're just gonna basically bring this to a boil, turn it down to a simmer, let it kind of boil away for about a minute or so. You're trying to get rid of kind of the, the musky pork smell. And so this thing is gonna boil. I'm gonna take it out of the pan and then cube it up, and then I'll show you kind of the next step. Oh my goodness, one crucial bit I forgot. You have to rehydrate these uh, dried mushrooms. I've had these soaking in the fridge for about you know, I would say about eight hours now, honestly. I think you can get away with soaking these for maybe three or four hours, but this is a key important difference, I think between your regular Hong Xiaoro or, you know, your mainland, maybe Shanghai, Shanghai style Hong Xiaoro is the addition of this mushroom and mushroom liquid for the braising liquid. And so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna chop up these mushrooms. I'm gonna save the liquid. The liquid is really important to keep. You're gonna use that to braise the pork after we do the initial boil to kind of get rid of the scum and the muskiness. So I'm gonna chop these up and then, yeah, we'll get to the next step where I start, start stir frying aromatics. All right, folks, I finished parboiling the pork. The goal is not to cook the pork all the way. You just kind of want to get a little bit of the muskiness out. So you, as you can see, it's still kind of raw inside. I cleaned my pan out. What I'm gonna do now is saute my ginger, my garlic, and my green onions into the pan with a little bit of oil. We're gonna add the pork and then we're going to get to the braising phase. All right, Foodie Jules here. We're gonna go go ahead and start the uh, stir fry process. So I just have some, you know, some ginger and some garlic here that I'm adding in. You can keep the peel on in the ginger. I have a high smoke point oil here, some avocado oil that's heated up. Um, we're gonna go ahead and stir fry. I almost forgot the scallions. We're going to go ahead and just, you know, stir fry these vegetables until they're aromatic, probably about, you know, a minute or two. You don't want to brown these though, but just until the aromas are starting to come out, then we can go ahead and add the pork. All right, the veggies have becoming, or my aromatics have started to become aromatic, so to speak. I can smell the ginger and the garlic. I'm going to go ahead and start adding the pork in. All right, I figure I'm just gonna, you know, toss this in the veggies. It's probably gonna stick a little bit. Usually when, when raw meat touches the pan, it's gonna kind of stick. You know, just to make sure I wanna evenly distribute the aromatics. What I noticed Karina do in the video, um, I think she just added the liquid right away. Um, yeah, I'm gonna do that. So this, this kind of turns the usual cooking process on its head because you're not actually browning in the sugar first. That's usually what you do with like, you know, Shanghai style Hong Xiao Ro. But I'm gonna go ahead and add my braising liquid. 
So first we're gonna start with, um, I, well I crank the heat down first a little bit. We're gonna start off with the, the, the liquid from the mushroom water. I'm gonna go ahead and add also my soy sauce. I didn't get exact measurements, so I used a two to one ratio of uh, light soy sauce to dark soy sauce, basically three tablespoons of light soy sauce to um, one and a half tablespoons of the dark soy sauce. I'm gonna pour that in. Okay. Next, we're gonna cover this with water. Just got my Brita filter. You know, just cover with sufficient water. I added the water. Now I'm also going to add, you know, the rest of my aromatics. So that includes my star anise, my cinnamon, the added, my, my own addition of the, this dried citrus peel and the chili peppers. We're gonna save the sugar for the end because that's what was done in the instructional video. So I'm gonna go ahead and add the tangerine peel, my cinnamon stick, my star anise, and a little bit of dried chili because I like a little bit of heat in my, my food. I'm also gonna add, more importantly, these mushrooms, which I assume are going to plump up even more when I brace in the liquid. I'm gonna put a little bit more water here and we're just gonna, you know, reduce this until the sauce uh, probably go, reduces by half or maybe two thirds and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, foodie jewels. The pork is still simmering away. It's not quite tender yet. It's gonna take a while. I'm gonna just let this guy run on low add water as needed just to make sure that you know we have enough proper braising liquid once it starts getting soft i'm going to probably start reducing the sauce but i'll keep you posted on how it turns out all right foodie jewels here she is about nice and tender and cooked really good recipe karina it's turning out pretty well it just took a long time to freaking braise this thing i took out the the solid chunky bits in my um in my stew I'm probably gonna try to fish out a little more ginger. I'm gonna add the rock sugar now though. It's kind of salty. Uh, uh, you know, it's really, it's it's odd to put the sugar in at the end, but I'm gonna see how this turns out. And yeah, we'll go from there. Cool. All right, I ended up putting just half of that sugar that I had pictured. I really like this version of Hong Xiao Ro, basically. It is, you know, it is like a Chinese adobo. It's a little more liquid forward. Um, not as, you know, really sweet because you don't put as much sugar and brown it in the sugar to begin with. It's just ever so slightly sweet, sweet. This is going to be a nice saucy dish to put with some rice. What I'm going to do, I'm not going to eat this right away. I'm going to let this in the fridge because everyone knows that adobo always tastes best the next day. And yeah, I'm probably going to, you know, reduce the sauce a little bit more, let it cool. And I'll show you how it looks tomorrow when I eat it with some rice. All right, she's looking beautiful and nicely reduced. I'm going to let this let this let, let this puppy cool before I put it in the fridge and then we're going to eat it tomorrow uh, while it kind of, you know, further steeps in its own braising liquid in the fridge. And yeah, that's Foodie Jules. I'll show you what the end result looks like. All right, Foodie Jules here. I let my Chinese adobo sit for a while. Uh, but now I'm going to try it out. Everybody knows that adobo tastes best a few days after. So I kind of let the pork belly, he got a little bit of egg there too, and some mushroom, soak in the sauce for a few days. But let's go ahead and give it a try. Got a nice juicy piece of pork belly. Mmm. That's very good. Shout out Karina, thank you for the recipe. Uh, I'll post her channel too to kind of support my small time YouTubers as well. This is really good. I think this is a nice compromise between your usual like Hong Xiao Ro, which is a little more um, sweet and rich. Some of the, um, you know, some of the, uh, the balance I think achieved in this dish is the fact that it doesn't use as much sugar and the sauce is a little bit thinner in a good way. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go ahead and try some of the skin. Mmm, very good. 
I think I actually like this more than um, Hong Xiao Ru. It's less sweet, not as cloying on the palate. Um, the mushroom gives a nice umami flavor. Overall, very good dish. You should definitely cook this for anybody who's watching. And yeah, that's my Chinese adobo. Well, not my Chinese adobo. Karina's Chinese adobo. And that's a review. Footy Jewels, signing out.